Uh, it's a lot of people. Um, <laughs> before we begin, just want to let you guys know, as part of this, a large part of this panel is a Q&A. We do have a microphone right up here in front. So if you have a question you want to ask, go ahead and line up now so we can get that chaos started before the panel. So make your way to the mic right there. Concho your way to the mic right there. Don't actually do that. That's a very bad idea. All right, cool. Now that we've got that flow going, I would like to welcome all of you guys to this afternoon's Critical Role panel here at Wizard World Portland. Uh, my name is Matthew Mercer. I am the Dungeon Master for uh, Critical Role, and uh, I personally want to thank you all for coming. This is more than I expected, and I'm really excited about that. So, uh, so yeah, I'm a voice actor. We started playing this crazy game, and uh, Dungeon Master wouldn't be much without his players. So let me go ahead and start bringing the rest of our crew here today on stage, beginning with the incredibly talented, hilarious Scanlan Shorthawk, played by yeah! Sam Regal. Hi, guys. Good to see you. Followed up by the wondrously uh, tinker-worthy human gunslinger, Percival Vaughn, you know the name, played by Talison Jaffe. Yeah. Say hi, Talison. Hello. Hi, Talison. I, oh, yeah. Oh, good. The microphone works. There we go. Hi. hi. Oh, wow. <laughs> My God, there's a lot of you. Oh, God. <laughs> Next up, we have the, the masterful uh, professional, mental, possibly challenged <laughs> barbarian <laughs> of strength and might, Grog Strongjaw, played by Travis Willingham. Thank you, Timmy. <clears throat> also ale. <laughs> <laughs> And let's bring in our lovely ladies of the group as well, uh, following up with uh, the wondrous Vaxalia, one half of the half-elf twins, the ranger gathering Trinket the Bear through the wild. We have Laura Bailey. Wow. <laughs> that was a good twirl. <laughs> And bring up the rest of our intrepid band of adventurers, we have the Arashari half-elven druid, Keyleth, played by Marisha Ray. <laughs> what a peaceful bow. The water bottle bow. And our mystical empty chair will also join us on the edge of the panel. It's Gilmore. This, is, this, is, this, is, this, channel, this, this uh, chair represents our two party members who could not be here. Unfortunately, uh, but just getting a little bit of love from here to Ashley, oh, who plays Pike, which we have a wonderful cosplayer here in the That's audience. That's a great looking Pike. It's a bunch of people, man. Yes. yes. And uh, Liam O'Brien, who plays the other half of the uh, twins, Vaxadon. Much love to you, Liam. Much love, Liam. Liam O'Brien. And um, and Trinket. You forgot to introduce. Me. I meant Trinket, but everyone was screaming over me. Oh. But yeah. Trinket, of course. Your favorite. I love Trinket. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love, I love him just sizzled over a nice grill, <laughs> some salt. I should have sat you next to her. That would have been fun. <laughs> that would have been fun. Um, so yeah, guys, <laughs> we're, we're excited that you came. Um, for those who don't know, we are. Who here doesn't know what the hell's going on right now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. Fantastic. Oh my God. So we are uh, apparently about to explode. Um, we're a bunch of uh, professional voice actors uh, working in video games and animation who also happen to be huge nerds who play Dungeons and Dragons. And we, uh, we began streaming our campaign about two years in, uh, almost a year ago actually. We're coming up on our anniversary soon. And uh, we stream on Twitch through Geek and Sundry every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific time and uh, we weren't sure if this was gonna go anywhere and anybody would like to watch it. And, uh, well, I think we're very wrong. <laughs> Apparently. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> we 
Which is great. So, um, so yeah, we're happy to be here. And uh, why not why not kick this off with uh, some of you guys' fan questions and see the stories roll out from there. So don't be afraid to jump in if you have any random thoughts or ideas. But uh, use, sir, the front. Yes, but sir. Warn us, warn us if you haven't seen. You know, yeah, you're so not up to date. Oh, yeah. You should yeah, say yeah. if you're because current I feel like, or not. Gotcha. I feel like spoilers. Yeah, we're trying to keep spoilers out of this discussion if so, possible. Which is going to be hard. I'm on the last, yeah, I'm one episode back. So I didn't get a chance to see Thursday, but I'm expecting to watch it on Monday. So. Everybody from here over is dead. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Which is really weird for me. <laughs> <laughs> when you kill the DM, your game gets a little strange. So that actually kind of brings up my question is, uh, about two or three episodes ago, uh, Liam said, oh, well, I guess next week we're playing Shadowrun. <laughs> so, I mean, are we one TPK away from a different game, or are we rolling up sure. new characters and going up next week? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know, the, this, this world, um, of, of, at least this world of Exandria that I've kind of created, and they've kind of helped build that with their character moments and backstories and such. Um, if any characters were to die, they would roll up a new character and we'd incorporate them into the story uh, to then join Vox Machina going forward. If it was a TPK, um, if I survived the internet's backlash, <laughs> um, we would pick up where the story left off, probably with another band of adventurers to continue the plot from a different angle um, in some way. So I, what I, if, Matt, what if everyone dies except Scanlan? <laughs> Could I have my actually, own show <laughs> that's just me and you and a triceratops? <laughs> like a buddy, a buddy comedy. <laughs> I think you have your answer. Okay. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Well, Sorry. Whatever. Right, yeah. Understand. No. <laughs> Fine. Great question. Um, okay. Um, I was wondering where you. Mic. Yeah, no, um, yes. The mic is your friend. Oh yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> um, what were you guys' inspiration for the characters? I can tell a little bit with Grog, it's kind of Conan the Barbarian kind of deal, or...? So what, what, what were your inspirations? I'm an idiot, so Grog's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I literally showed up to the game Are that was... With the first game that we had was at Liam O'Brien's birthday party, and Matt had given us, like, classes, races, all that stuff. And I was like, uh, I don't want to be an orc, I'll be a goliath! Oh, uh, goliaths are big, I'm big, that'll be fun, and I'll be a barbarian because I suck at math and spells seem complicated and whatever. I didn't even come up with a name, and he sat down and he goes, what's your character's name? And I was like, Grog? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of thought that went into some of these characters. You, <laughs> no. you, were, you were very excited about your no, boots, I yeah, do remember that. You, the boots were very boots. intense, yeah. you made boots. I made fine leather so, boots. Yeah, he was so proud of that fact. <laughs> And yep. has not come into play at all. not come into play nope. since he established that. He makes shitty leather boots. That's probably the better <laughs> way to say it. they're fine. I imagine Grog yeah. has like an Etsy store in yeah. spare time. <laughs> <laughs> making boots. Boot Maiden. That's my Etsy name. I like it. Yeah. I like maiden. it. Thank you. That's... Inspiration for your characters. Other, yeah. other inspiration. Uh, I, my, mine was based off of a short story that I had written and never done anything with. And then... Also, the, I guess uh, stylized, uh, uh, Percy has a lot of, uh, takes a lot of cues from the movie Plunkett and McLean, which I probably, I mentioned, I'm, that movie is ridiculous and I'm so proud that it exists. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and that and a short story about what the poor uh, jerk who invented the first gun would have been like and, <laughs> and what awful circumstances would have led to that. It, it, it's, it's changed quite a bit from there, but like that's kind of where I came from from that's him. It was exciting. It was a class I'd never played before. It was Pathfinder. I was curious. That was, very first game, though, you were you were something. I was a different. I was I was a I was a dragonborn, dragonborn uh, paladin, right? paladin because the very first game that we played, nobody really knew how to play except for Matt and Talison, and Liam had played some like in high school. But we all were floundering. We had no idea. So they brought Talison as the ringer. Like, so if we got into trouble, he Seriously. could be like... There, there were several times where, like, covered. things just got worse and worse and worse, and we're finally like, okay, <laughs> coming in, fixing it. All right, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, he, he literally came in like Doogie Howser and just brilliantly solved the puzzle that we were all nearly about to die we're from. Die. The look on Matt's face was like, this is first grade and you're all dead already. <laughs> I'm we so glad I don't have to do that Dragonborn accent anymore. Yeah. That was so awful. Yeah, it was amazing. Young one. He was just sort of heavy and dry and everything. It was, yeah. oh, God, awful. Ooh. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of sexy. <laughs> oh, hey, 
Jesus. Um, <laughs> my, my character uh, came about because I asked Liam, I didn't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons, uh, and I asked Liam, what, what's the dumbest character? <laughs> and he said, he said probably a bard. <laughs> And I was like, what's, what's the weakest character? And he said, I don't know, like a gnome. <laughs> and I went to uh, Dungeons and Dragons name generator. And that's how I found the name. No. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, I totally <laughs> half-assed it. <laughs> yeah. Totally, totally just like, yeah, sure, whatever. We're gonna do, we were gonna do it one time. I didn't, it, I, it wasn't important. Were you yeah. hoping to die in like one session so you could come back? Well, we were all gonna just yeah, play just once one for game. his birthday so and then that fun. was it. So I was like, yeah, I'll just be a dumb character. And then it turns out I'm the best one. <laughs> Super powerful and awesome. I can do anything. It's amazing. Who knew? And I get to sing. I love it. I love it. What'd you say? Including crapping on a bed. That's right. I can crap on beds. That's an extra class. Um, I, I played a. I had tried a druid in fourth edition, and I hated it. And I thought druids were useless. Um, and then we did this game, and I was like, all right, yeah, I guess I'll. I'll try up okay, Druid's shop one more time. And uh, this was Pathfinder, and you could pick um, a domain, kind of like clerics could. And I couldn't decide between any of the elements. So I was like, well, I'll just start with air, and I'll just make it like my thing to go get all of them. <laughs> and um, and that, that's kind of how she, she was born, <laughs> not really out of character development, mainly out of like selfish mid-maxer shit. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And then it kind of like, I'm a huge Avatar of the Last Airbender fan. <laughs> I didn't mean to make her based off of the Last Airbender. It just kind of sort of subconsciously sleep, like seeped in and happened that way. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's it really. Boom. Um, I wanted, I wanted to be a rogue. Um, but Liam had already taken Rose, <laughs> and um, I wanted to be a half-elf, but Liam had already taken half-elf, and then I realized that Liam and I actually in real life share a birthday, and so I'm like, what if we were actually twins in the game, and he loved it, and we went with it, and so I was, I was debating between a ranger and a druid, actually I didn't even know for sure which one I wanted, I just emailed Matt, and I was like, I want a pet. What, what class can I have a pet with? And he said, either a druid or a ranger. So I went with ranger, so I could have trinket. <laughs> <laughs> Who's wonderful? He's, He's the um, best. Yeah, and so that's why I, um, I kind of just started multi-classing into rogue, though, because I figure it's been long enough I can start learning the stealthy moves from my brother, so. Yeah? yeah. That was a great question. Who wears a 2XL? Two weeks out. Here, you have a jetpack fighter shirt. <laughs> Give it out stuff when awesome questions are asked. I don't even know where you pulled that from. Uh, you don't yeah, want to know. know. We got jetpack <laughs> fighter shirts. I don't know where that came from. We're throwing stuff at everyone. The it has got huge cavities. Yes. <laughs> so they said one question. Um, Matt. Yes. What comes first, the voice or the NPC? Mm. Oh. Uh, for me, it's the NPC. Um, it's, you know, for me, the, the, the character inspiration for the NPC comes from where they fit in the story, where they fit in the civilization, what their drives are, and then I start thinking about their history. Then I decide, you know, depending on that point, what their racial traits and lifestyle would lend them to have a specific type of cadence, texture, you know, uh, vocal pitch. And so the voice is the last thing that actually goes to it, but I make sure to note next to every NPC what the voice type and dialect is, because inevitably they're going to be pulled out of nowhere. And it's fine if it's a home game and a character's voice changes from session to session, but when you have the internet, like, <laughs> going crit yeah. roll stats, like scanning every episode. <laughs> you're like, how many... He's got how many notepad in, notepad right now. Yeah. Yeah. He's got the notepad right, right now. How many, how many character NPC inconsistencies has Mercer done since episode one? Yeah. Let's look at the time code. So, He's our so, own court stenographer. Right, I know. So, so it, that's also forced me to kind of step up my game a little bit too. So you guys have helped me with that. 
Um, but yeah, so I, I go character first, voice second, and then make notes to remind myself where that then, lies. Then do you choose how many fingers they have? <laughs> that's, that's only come up recently. Okay. That's called character progression. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Soon it will be less than three. <laughs> and that, and that, that, <laughs> well played. That, that character came out of nowhere, too. Like, that was apparent. I just yeah, found Vic, out that... Yeah, v Victor wasn't planned. Victor is an NPC that was pulled out of the ether when... We were in Baselheim the first time, and Percy's like, I'm gonna go buy some black powder. Where can I find that? And I'm like, Better think Well, <laughs> let's find out. Uh, like, even when he asked, What's your name? And I just went, Vincent! <laughs> and he's like, What was that? And I went, In my head, I'm like, I don't know. What did I just say? It sounded kind of like Victor. Victor it is! And, you know, it just kind of came out of nowhere. So, uh, some, some NPCs, they get so created good. simultaneously. So, yeah. Had you, had you created Gilmore before we ran into Gilmore? Yes, I designed okay. Gilmore's Glorious Goods uh, as part of the Abadar's <laughs> Promenade Niman, uh, intentionally, as one of the characters you might encounter as you went through the city. And so I, I was very that. glad that he got to have his moment to shine and continue to shine. I wasn't expecting Ooh. him to become so central to parts shine of the story. So bright. Wow. Wow. There is no life without Gilmore. Gilmore no. <laughs> He's a majestic one. Yeah. That, that I, only, I only recently realized, looking back at the episodes, that his hand is like this. He just, he just has a hand at all times. He's presentary, and then when he's, <laughs> of course. It's almost like he's holding a fan, but he's not one there. I don't know, it's weird. Good question. This he's is a, for you for later. He's a fan oh. fire. Oh, all right. Hey, that was a good question. Someone's getting a t-shirt. Hey! Just throw it, just throw it as hard as you can. <laughs> First row. You're just hitting that front you row, You made it man. to the first row. My arm is spaghetti. I'm a, I'm a young, also, I'm you a young boy. You have little boy arms. I'm like, no. I'm a little boy. Don't get me. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. Here's a question that I'm sure the people at Crit Roll Strats would like to know about. Um, that is, it's directed at Tolleson. And um, as far as uh, the feat you chose for Percival, We've seen two of the three choices that you've made for him. Will we be seeing the third choice? No, you've seen all three. Oh, what, really? What are they? Oh, so they so are, they are... Uh, Hex, Hex minor, illusion. minor Illusion, and Friends. Oh. oh, that's right. Friends, Friends is the third one, which I have now used a couple times. To do, some, do, 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 I, was, I was about to use it on you if things had started getting way too bad really in, the, in, the, in the shop. Oh, shit. <laughs> like, like <laughs> I, was, I was going to very, very gently suggest that you just hand everything over to Vex <laughs> uh, and enchant you to do so. I was like, I was prepared to... to I didn't know you could do I magic. That's my know. money. Instead, you pulled the amazing Minor Illusion move. Minor Illusion worked out great. Which anyway. is... <laughs> Miss I that have too. to say, this is the best thing because Travis legitimately did not know nope. that that's what he did. Oh, yeah. So it wasn't with the a skull? character yeah. choice. People were like, oh, know. Travis with the amazing RP playing a character. I didn't fucking notice, you guys. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> after the game, he's like, so what would have happened if I put my hand in the shadow? I'm like, well, you would have grabbed the skull then, wouldn't you? And he's like, no! He was just so angry. You were so angry. Matt was going to give it to me, too. And I'm like, I don't reach in there. He's you yeah. stupid shop water. I was trying to give you the eye when that was happening. Like, uh, don't do it. Don't do it. He's super ridiculous. dumb. <laughs> You're Good all question. a bunch of dicks. <laughs> uh, this is as both um, as you as people and as characters. It's kind of hard because Liam's not here, but do you guys think Vaxlith is a healthy relationship? <laughs> <laughs> is a healthy relationship? Not at all. No. No. No, not at all. <laughs> they're, like, they're like the two friends in high school who are dating, and you're like, this is going to be such an explosion. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so bad. If this yeah, is the that's... first time I'm hearing any of this, by the way. <laughs> Guys, tell me. Just tell me. I, I think it's awesome. It's right amazing. Now. It's amazing. I just love. I know. Wait, not everybody's caught up. I mean, wait, I just. Wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. Spoiler alert! If Spoiler you're not alert. caught up, go la 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 la. I just Kishaw feel like uh, showing up in that last would. episode. What? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Kishaw showing up in the last episode made me so happy I as was a amazing. person. So happy. <laughs> so, happy. so good, and I just. So angry as Vex. <laughs> it was wonderful. It's pretty great. Yeah, I no, just... I'm starting to get used to it. <laughs> oh, I'm kind of going for it now as Vex, though. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Going for it? Yeah. I mean, Don't we could talk him. about you and Jared. Don't fuck him up. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, it, uh, XL, big XL. Okay, I'm going over here. I love our system. On you had a good question. Let's give it hey. to someone else. Is it? Am I too it's much? Like oh. Just move it up. up oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got technology. Over to the side. Move. All right, a little bit better. Hi. Can I hear um, a little bit better? So I've been a, a DM for a little bit, and. Uh, <laughs> Quick, I'm DM not... off. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly a question for uh, Matt, but everyone else can help answer it. Um, okay, well, we'll help you. Yeah, no. oh, thank you. Uh, I've had, been having troubles with my players actually trying to role play in the games. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I try setting up the scenario so that it's kind of easy for them to do it, but it's just like one of them, his most creative side is to kill a monster by poking in the butt. <laughs> and then another that's one. That's a method. Yeah. Yes. I do but that. every time the problem is. Not. <laughs> but uh, then what happens if, if he comes back into town and someone's like, <laughs> oh, look, it's Gerald, the butt poker. <laughs> All hail the butt poker. And he becomes known as the butt poker everywhere. Then you can work it in. But, um, uh, yeah. Also, there's another one that uh, instead of trying to escape a dangerous encounter that I put him in, instead started to roll for a new character. While we're playing the game, so well, how do I make like them? Your players like have more. more? <laughs> well, get them more open to the game. Yeah, stop. <laughs> for that, for them to already be rolling a new character during the the encounter means maybe they want to try a different class, which is fine if they want to do that. As far as engaging people, you can't. To use an old adage, you can't lead a horse to water. You know, it, it, a person has to, one, feel comfortable enough to step out of their comfort zone to try it. So you can't force it on them. You can try and coax them into it over time. Uh, I also find it helps if you engage them as the NPC directly. You know, if you tell them, like, you walk into the tavern, and the barkeeper tells you, ah, oh, you should buy a room. It's different than going, he turns to you, you know, squeaks the inside of his jar and goes, hey, miss, uh, what can I do for you? You know, and just that eye contact, it, it becomes a conversation as opposed to keeping them in their, you know, imagination, uh, you know, control facet that feels more comfortable. And it might take a while. And you can talk to your players and be like, hey guys, it'd be kind of cool if we could try and push a little more into kin character RP and discussions. And, uh, you know, don't feel, don't put any pressure on them for it, but help kind of coax them out by addressing them directly and taking into account that what they say is what their character says. Also help. So if you're like, oh, I'm not going to talk to this guy. Be like, I'm sorry, you're not going to talk to who? <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I didn't, that was him, you know? And uh, so you, you can play in elements of that and, and just get them comfortable with the idea of, of speaking as their character. Not everyone will like be, and you can't force it, but. We're you're... learning. We're, I'm seeing behind the screen right now, and it's kind of weird yeah. <laughs> to like know that that's what you're doing to us. <laughs> Puppet master. You're, you're, you're good at rewarding RP, too. It's like, all her like, rude. Things just work out better when we actually RP. Well, that's the thing is like, uh, uh, RP circumstances can also have their own awards, too. If someone talks their way out of a good situation, you know, they will get a, a more uh, profitable circumstance based on a quest or mission they're on. They might uncover information that is vital to their current, you know, plan and disposition. They may end up unlocking an ally <laughs> that they didn't have previously. You know, these are all different ways you can reward good RP, as well as just a nice little experience bump. Like, I keep track of, you know, good character moments, and I give little bonus experience You do points. not. You do not. <laughs> do you not read the emails that you get, like, like every, like, oh, yeah. There's a bunch of numbers in them. <laughs> yeah. You realize we get different numbers, right? We do? Wait. We do get different See, numbers. We, we get different like, numbers. Wait, wait, We don't wait. get the same. Do I get, like, extra experience when I do, like, when I, like, Haggle? No, nobody cares about that. Because <laughs> you know. never, you you? never write that in the email. You, you, you can talk to him about maybe that. doing that. That's a great question. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, damn it! Oh, the door is closed. <laughs> he doesn't tell us crap. Nothing. No. And we try all the time. It's fine. Travis texts him all the time, like, so. I'll text him when it's late. Just maybe he's had a drink. Maybe he's tired. I'm like, so if I had actually crushed the skull, what would happen? He's like, you don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 
Son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm actually really excited because we have planned, as soon as we all eventually die or if this, you know, campaign comes to an end, we want to have, we're going to have a party that's like us at God's gate. And it's just gonna be us asking Matt. Okay, that time. All that, the questions. Yeah. Okay, that one time that we did this, and it's just gonna be us asking Matt all idea. the questions that that's we've ever wanted. Idea. Maybe we should just all die now. We should. Yeah. <laughs> TPK. Don Suicide pack. You sir. <laughs> <laughs> What's your question? Um, first, if anyone hasn't seen Thursday's episode, just you have to watch it. It's like the best in a in a long time. Just amazing. <laughs> Uh, my question is for Matt. Um, yeah. I'm also, you know, I've been doing um, DMing my own campaign for close to a year now, nice. and um, I guess my question is, is about role playing, specifically role playing uh, women, and mm -hmm. if that's something that you've had to, because I, I, um, I guess going into it, I, I'm aware of all these tropes that I can sort of fall into and just yeah. pitfalls for role playing women and how do you approach uh, designing and RPing you know a, a woman just all, this is all actually, women you know, really just all women talk like this <laughs> <laughs> hi oh my god you are a ma you are a master class i swear <laughs> I feel I feel like a better actor. Laura's so gonna I kick you. you in I've the actually nuts. felt the heat from Laura's hair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't oh want yeah. those dragon eyes. <laughs> no, it's it's interesting because because it is a it's another like comfort hurdle for a lot of, of players and dungeon masters who like to kind of step into the opposite sex. You know we have a lot of cultural weirdness in places about that whole thing and and you have to kind of look past that initially. I was a theater kid so I didn't have any shame. Um, <laughs> theater. But, um, but also, it's you know just like any other person. They're just a person. You can you you think of, you know, their their wants, their needs, their fears, their their drives, their goals. And then as a female, one you consider their place in the world. Are is it like our society was 50 years ago when women were almost a second class citizen? And are they fighting to to make themselves? And they're kind of you know trying to fight back from the patriarchy. Are they heralded as a matriarch? Are they you know is it, is it like the uh, you know the we're talking loath spider queen style where the men are just used for you know fodder and mating and are slaughtered? Like you know. They figure out their power dynamic in society and just be comfortable that it's a strong character, not necessarily that it's a woman. That becomes a secondary and unnecessary facet to it, in my opinion. Um, and that's true for storytelling in general. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it. Then, it, as far as just distinguishing, if you wanted to, like, I had this question earlier about how do you change your voice to be a female? I'm like, I don't change my voice that much, really. Um, there's a difference between chest voice and uh, head voice. You know, it's just like uh, thinking of the definition, it goes up and more into your upper palate and your sinuses. And, and for a man, it just takes some of the resonation out of it to where a character that talks normally in this way can sound a little softer, a little more um, light, gently domineering, which I really enjoy as a strong female NPC. Um, you know, Allura skirts that line quite a bit. I like that a lot. So. Uh, but yeah, more than anything, it, it shouldn't be part of a focus. And if a, if a player, because you always get that dumb player, is like, you know, a barkeep, a, 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 you know, a barmaiden comes up and is like, can I get you guys a drink? And he's like, oh, she's a woman? Well, I'm going to go ahead and slap her on the butt. He's about to get pummeled by the guards in the tavern. <laughs> Remember that even in these, in these societies, sexism probably is not cool. And that whoever works at that bar has a lot of friends she works with that are watching her back. So, hopefully, just saying. All right, thank you. No worries. Corn Good nuts. question. Great question. Great question. We have no more Six more t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Theater for life, first off. Um, I apologize if I ramble, because I do that. Thanks to your critical role in things like Will Wheaton's tabletop, watching people play tabletop games has become very popular, more popular than it has been previously, with tons of Twitch, game, tons of Twitch shows like Critical Role, uh, Actual Plays, which are podcasts of people playing art D&D and things. Yeah. Um, with all of that, are there any secondary versions of, of Critical Role, Actual Plays, things like that, that you guys enjoy? If so, what? If not, would you? To, to watch on our own? To maybe? watch or listen to or anything like that. Like you could put it on your phone as well. Well, for myself, I can barely even make the game that we play. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of time to veg out and watch other people play and roll dice. Although, uh, I've, I've heard, well, you were, Laura was in, you both were in, were, were you in Titan's Grey or were? Uh, Titan's Grey. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was cool. Thanks. <laughs> 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 that was cool. Yeah, that was, that was really cool. cool. Yeah, 
Yeah, Titan's Great was really fun. Yeah. Um, I want, I, Curtis Weeb, the writer and co-creator of Rock Wings, yeah. they do uh, D20 Babes, and we, we did a Star Wars RPG with Curtis. And yeah, it was, place. Yeah, it was really, really fun, and they're great people, so yeah. Yeah, yeah played that's a Wookiee. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't talk, I loved it. And yeah. there's always, uh, no, D20 there's D20 always Babes is great. D20 Babes. Yeah. Yeah, Acquisitions Inc. has been around for forever. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, and they're great. And then that's really great. Also, there's, um, I've, I've enjoyed it for a long time, uh, Real Role Play. With, you know, uh, JP, it's me, those guys. Um, yeah. They do phenomenal games for, for a very long time. Uh, uh, there's I also, so. what's up? Like oh, I'm, I confused myself. Um, also recently, uh, the Yogcast guys have done High Rollers, which is DM'd by a good friend of mine, Mark Holmes, out in the UK, and they're kicking ass as well. So those are a number of the ones that I, you know, watch and keep track of, both for inspiration and to, uh, you know, meet other people in the community. So it's cool. Good question. Well done. Yeah. Your Woo! best is fantastic. <laughs> Next question. Hello. Hello. Yes. I have a question that's a little more specific than these other ones. Uh, okay. It has to do with the very first Christmas special, yes. where toward the end, Marisha got an in-character letter from Pike, which included a psalm that was in Celestial. And I was wondering if you ever got it translated. To um, decipher the letter that I got from Pike that was written in Celestial? Yeah. You know? <laughs> It's still on my to-do list. <laughs> but I have a translation still have for it you. in there. I'm sure it's a wonderful, lovely message. She owes me breakfast, so this just doesn't surprise me. Well, it's true. I, uh, Did you write it? I brought the translation you? with me, so you can uh, oh. not have to do the work. Surprised too, because she took Celestial for three years in college. So was, <laughs> she should have it. Eat oh. more chicken. It's a lot of cursing. It's a lot of stuff. Hi, Don't call I'm it a cry. comeback. I'm gonna cry I've been if here I read it. Years. I can't read it. Don't read it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Keep so going. I'm the dungeon master for our current group, and I've noticed on Critical Role that whenever you guys roll a one. Uh, it's just an auto miss, uh, and you guys don't have a fumble chart or anything for the ones. I was wondering if that was something specifically for the show, fumble or chart? if you as a dungeon master don't like using them, or oh. what was up with that, or if there's just enough pain in the game as it is. Right, yeah. What is he saying? Translate. In, 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 I don't play Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> in older editions and some variations, if you were to roll a natural one, yes. it wasn't just an auto miss. It was, you died. It was like a, you had to go roll on a chart fail. to see what horrible thing happened to you for rolling so poorly. Oh, okay. Which, which is really fun. Um, for my games, I, I consider the natural one more of a narrative failure. Like I like to explain elements of, you know, the visual aspect of why you failed so much. And it's, in some cases, it's more of a shame. You know, than an actual, <laughs> more of a mechanical, you know, horrible blunder. It's always a shame. It's always shame. Always shame. Always shame. And partially because I've played games where people use those charts and they're like, all right, you go to attack the orc and critical, you know, critical fail. All right, you accidentally cut off your own head. I'm like, really? <laughs> How is that? No. How would you ever do? That? No. Yeah, what was it? The, the con we were at this past weekend and the guy was telling a story about that and he rolled, uh, the guy made him roll to just like gently kick his friend awake. Like he was just kind of nudging his friend awake. And so the DM made him roll for it and he rolled a nap, like a, na a nat Natural one. 20. Or, no, or it was 20, oh, like, it was a natural he's 20. He's like, roll strength check. I'm like, to kick your roll strength away. check. He kicked his head off? He kicked his head off. <laughs> you were 100% right. He kicked like, his head like off. He and did. I was like, that's harsh. Yeah. That's like that's way bullshit. harsh. That's bullshit. Awesome. It's that's like, awesome. you just got punished for a nat 20. That's, that's not okay. That's not okay. That's great. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, like, I, I, I think it's, it's a cool system if you want to incorporate it. I, I tried it for years for certain things, and it has its merits, definitely. I felt for our game, I, I like to make the fumbles more of a, a, a narrative failure than actual mechanical failure, because then it can get a little too weird and really, really bite you back, so. I gave them the choice, and they chose the sheet. <laughs> oh, fair enough. And that, and that is entirely their call. Heads, heads will roll. Let them burn. 
Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, this question is not so much about D and D as much as it is about your careers in general. Kind of just a fun question in, uh, entirely. But um, if you could steal one role from one of your colleagues, like for example, if Travis wanted to steal the role of Crom from Matt, or if Marisha wanted to steal the role of Maka from Laura, would you do it? And I don't know who would you take? Stealing a role from somebody else. Stealing on a yeah, role? yeah. Like if if you wanted to voice somebody that you were uh, one of these people sitting oh, in these chairs oh, would do, role. would oh, you right. do it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, who would it be? Uh, oh, man. I don't know if I've thought about it. I mean, Ellie, uh, she's not here, yeah, but Ellie, Ellie from Last of Us, that's an amazing Ellie. character. But the thing is, like, I can say Ellie. Hey. Whoa! Hey. Oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. Best con ever. <laughs> I can say Ellie from The Last of Us, but she wouldn't be that character. She wouldn't be that amazing if Ashley hadn't played her. Right? Yeah, I, I actually I kind of agree with Laura. It's almost hard to say because yeah. the actors bring so much of yeah. the characters themselves that it, it just wouldn't be the same. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I agree. But I guess if I had to pick one, <laughs> Thor. Yeah. I want Thor. Yeah. You can have him. <laughs> Thank you. Tell that to Marvel. <laughs> I'll take Black Widow if you take the one. Hey, I like you take Black Widow. Okay, all right. all right, yeah. Oh, I mean, I have a terrible nasal voice. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have some of uh, Travis's sack. <laughs> I'll, I'll trade you my sack for your beer. That's, You've got beer. That's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> you, ma'am. Um, first of all, I am dressed as Vixalia today. Oh, wow! Oh, oh shit! Oh, I just realized shit. it took me half a second. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very Go. vague, but you know, I oh, worked with it. That's awesome. Um, first of all, Matt, thank you so much because I have wanted to dungeon master for years and years, and I'm, I'm finally doing it. Yeah! <laughs> oh, I'm starting a Pathfinder next week. So thank you for all the tips and tricks and stuff that you put online. I am so thank thankful. you. I, I hope they help. And there's a lot of great communities online too. Far before I put anything up there that that you know expand upon these tips as well. So don't be afraid to also look out and reach out to like the the Reddit D and D page and the, the RPG. Yeah, um, like that, all those guys. That being said, last year I touched a Wheaton, and my rolls have been really shitty. Oh no! I'm so sorry. So do you have any like? Will things we, that uh, I can do to kind of like don't touch them. Them. Will we, we can try, but understand that's a very strong curse. That's like <laughs> he's that. No, no, I no, no. Just, like, just, like, I'll just the get a selfie with lot. Talison, and, I, and it'll be fine, I'm sure. Okay. No, I, it'll, I, it'll I specifically good. had sage powdered in dragon's blood. It was really intense. Like it okay, was like some, I, yeah. I'll try that too. No, I'm not Step kidding. Forward, I'm not kidding. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll. <laughs> You, good. sir, yeah. man with the beer. Oregon and beer, uh, beer, right? The yeah. beer's really good. It's really hoppy and delicious. <laughs> <laughs> my, my question's for you, Matt. Yep. Uh, how the heck do you come up with all the names for the places around the world? That's uh, the problem I'm having, because I'm trying to create a game. It's just naming places is my problem. Naming, naming in convention is interesting. Uh, I've always liked making up weird names anyway, and a lot of times I'll just start thinking of... It starts with letters that haven't been used very often in other... <laughs> Area, so I'll be like, all right, I made a still bend. So that's like an S day, so I don't want to make another S name town nearby. So W, I'll go W, West Western. You know, kind of came from just trying to think of, uh, uh, kind of it's it's to the west of where the main city will be. So it's that sort of the expansion sent to west that will work on the name there. And then from that point, I started taking inspiration from different languages that would uh, affiliate that area. A lot of Norse language works in like uh, near Vasselheim. Um, looking into to root words and certain, you know, uh, spelling techniques in other languages and jamming things together that sound interesting and roll off the tongue well. What, what you do is you pick your middle name and the street you grew up on <laughs> and your pet name. <laughs> and that's the name. Yeah, and, and there's also uh, there's really good uh, name generators online for fantasy locations that you can go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Worked out well for some folks. Um, but yeah, just pull inspiration from 
books that you like, campaigns that already exist, you know, source books if you have them, and just take pieces from certain words that you like and jam them together and see if it sounds nice when you say it. That's all you really need. All right. Name all your characters Percy. <laughs> all of them. Percival, DeRolo, DeMomo. Frederick. Wait, wait, Percy. Because it's delightful. Oh, it's delectable. It's delectable. It's delightful. Next okay. question. Thank you very much. Come on, Personal. wait, wait, wait. Vex wants oh, to try it. No, 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 no. I've sure. had some ale. Love it. <laughs> I heard that. Hi. Hi. I have some bracelets for you guys. For you guys. Oh. Bracelets for you guys. Um, I don't really have a question. I'm gonna give these to you guys. I'm representing Extra Life. We raise money for dorm beckers, and we raise money for children who are sick terminally. And I just want to give you some bracelets. A blonde this woman. Thank you so much. That's great. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Which I want to take a minute while we're, while we're talking about this, actually. Yeah. Um, one of the really amazing things that's come out of this whole community, aside from the perpetual <laughs> oh beer. Thank you so much. Oh, amazing. Seriously, <laughs> best Power. panel ever. Yeah, this is the best panel. <laughs> yeah. A bit of advice, <laughs> write ale into your backstory, bitches, because hey. <laughs> Hey, hey, also, like don't write poop into your backstory because <laughs> we people send operas. me poop all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that um, if we wait for like 10 minutes, one will just appear. They're like spawning. This is that's, that's real Spawn magic, location. yo. Yeah. What? Uh, so that's real magic. But no, uh, I'm taking a minute off, off that topic. One of the, I mean, so many amazing things have sprung out of this show and this community uh, more than we ever could have expected or hoped. But one of the things that perpetually humbles and blows me away is the generosity of all of you guys supporting all these wonderful charities and all these wonderful causes. You guys communally cool. have raised so much money and so much awareness to so many amazing, largely overlooked in a lot of cases, uh, charitable uh, intents, and, and, and it's, it's incredible. And so give yourselves a huge round of yeah, applause. Yeah, seriously. For being as incredible as you guys are. We are literally changing I mean, the world with D&D. &D. It's crazy. It's, it's pretty it's crazy. It's so amazing that you guys have, have done so much and that you know, Christmas is the most amazing thing, and the gifts that you guys send are so wonderful. But the fact that you guys are donating to other people and doing good in the name of just, you know, this community is just so freaking amazing. Yeah, because ultimately, the whole reason we even did this show was to share it out with other people. So, and to share the joy that is D&D &D and gaming. So. Uh, it, it's just even yeah. more of a compliment and an honor to hear you guys paying it forward and to continue to spread the gospel that is the player's handbook. <laughs> the gospel. Use that. Yes, uh, my question is for Matt. Um, how, do you, how do you keep like your, your homebrew classes, like Blood Hunter, Witch Hunter kind of stuff, how do you work to keep those balanced without you know, even making them the totally community. crap or <laughs> way overpowered? Well, Homebrew classes and races is a new thing to me as well. Like I never really create like the, blood, well, the first real homebrew thing was just the transition of your guns, you know, your gunslinger over from Pathfinder. And even that's that took a while of just testing and figuring it out. Um, learning learning to balance something homebrew on that degree, especially a new class or a new archetype, is something that just comes with experience and with community feedback. Because while I'm happy that I'm you know somewhat decent at D and D. There's, there's so many great communities out there that are far more knowledgeable of how the game's the original design construct was based on, what is considered good versus bad balance, and that's kind of when I threw my stuff out there. It was to the wolves in a way, because everyone was like, that's just broken, this is messed up, that's it. And I'm like, cool, t thank you for telling me that, now I can go back and fix it. How about now? I'm like, this is, oh, this is better now. You know? Uh, so internet may be, may be angry and forceful sometimes with this feedback, but as long as it's still constructive and it's awesome, which most of the community is, that's a tremendous source for you to use. So like there's, there's, there's the Unearthed Arcana Reddit. It's a whole area that's all about homebrew D&D content, and they're all very knowledgeable and very you know, willing to help you with feedback on your own homebrew ideas. Awesome. Thank you. So thank you. Oh, yeah. Howdy, folks. Hello. Uh, my question's actually for Portland, like a survey. Uh, so I'm going to need some for help Portland? here. Yeah. All right. Uh, Lean a little All bit the way closer, into yeah. the mic. Sorry. So I'll need some help here, like a survey. But I'm thinking we have Scanlon Shorthall right here. Can we please tell him that trinkets should always go with the party? Yes! Yes! I heard of Portland. I know. How if Portland thinks 
trinket. So who am I to argue with that? I mean, you're Burt Reynolds. Trinket is just an unstoppable force <laughs> of power, grace. He has, he has saved. He has done some serious. When he. <laughs> I had to put my coat somewhere last episode. That was very important. When he saves me, I will respect him. He did him. save you. <laughs> no. I, I, think I, so. think so. I think so. I feel like no, he did. did. Like once. When Carol Stad shakes his head, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, the human encyclopedia yeah. says no. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, but you know, how many, how many times has Trinket killed anybody? <laughs> One? He bit a vampire's freaking head off! Three? Three kills! Yeah, nine times. Hey, two. hey, we've gotten two. How do you want to do this? And I've killed at least that many. <laughs> Listen, Trinket is great. You're almost as useful as a bear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it just needs to be solved PvP. Oh, yeah. No. Scaling oh, versus yeah. Trinket. Yeah, I would do that. that would so we can make a lot of money Trinket, bear wrestling. Trinket only like. has 60 hit points, you yeah, guys. Yeah, but what if he gets lucky? No, be no versus bear. So that's why right. I don't send him in. He's only got 60 hit points, and so if he dies, then he dies, and I don't know what I would do. Y'all, this is truth. No. This is truth. <laughs> the, one, the one time before the stream when I smacked the bear on the ass and sent it through this minefield, I almost got divorced. <laughs> like, legitimately. I don't know. I don't know. Like, what I love is when we were fighting the, the dragon at our keep, right? Yep. And he got frozen. Yep. Like, this was out of character. I'm looking at Travis going, you better fucking save that. I gotta save, save that this. fucking bear. <laughs> Because if he dies, there's no joy in the world. I feel like that was the one time like Grog really acted out of character when he like saved Trinket. Dude, she would walk home and all the flowers in the front yard would die. <laughs> <laughs> save that bear, man. <laughs> Woo. Rule number one. I'm just saying that a ferret or even like a goldfish. What is this, Hogwarts? <laughs> no. no. Or an okay. owl. But I, I do or a cat. Like, if a ranger, if I could take the spell polymorph, if I could have that fucking spell, I would, I would be so happy. I hate that, like, anytime I want to bring Trinket and we're, like, stealthing or something like that, and I'm like, Marisha, he lives Hopefully I've got it. Can you use one of your spells that you have a limited amount of to <laughs> polymorph my bear? It's, it's, that red panda By the way, I can... Awesome. Yeah, I was say, yeah. I, mean, I, can, I can turn him into a red panda. That's generally all I care I about. I can always do that, and I never will. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be sad, gnome. You could do be happy, gnome. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No, no. Okay, Rosie. Next question, right. Rosie. Okay, so uh, first of all, thank you, Laura, for rolling in that one on my die earlier. Thank and you. Uh, so, while well, I was in Beauty and the Beast on the first, on the opening night, Gaston's wig fell off, and I was wondering if you guys ever had any embarrassing moments on stage. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Every yeah. episode. <laughs> I mean, let's cut to like the eight times between Laura and I that we've been like, we just, <laughs> oh god, oh god, this is crying. I mean, that counts. You mean, you, you mean during the show, or I mean legitimately on like a theatrical stage? On a theatrical stage. Okay, okay. so on actual uh, stage shows. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was uh, I was in Les Misérables as a child. I played Gavroche. And where 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 did you play it? You know and. Broadway. <laughs> uh, no, I did. I did a national tour, uh, and I was performing in uh, ten, Miami. Miami. Uh, this is a long time ago, uh, like '89 uh, or something. Anyway, I uh, I fell on stage and I I injured my knee, and I was taken to the hospital. Uh, long story, but I was you know uh, I was wearing rags and dirt and stuff, <laughs> and I brought I was brought to the hospital, and this was. It just so happened that in Miami that night there were riots. <laughs> Martin Luther King Day riots or okay. something. So they brought me in, this little boy, this little white boy. <laughs> and they're like, why are you here? And I was like, I fell off the barricade. <laughs> Were you protesting? <laughs> and I was 
like, I mean, I guess. <laughs> we were like, Viva la Revolution! Yeah, and so they thought I was the youngest civil rights protester ever. <laughs> Little French boy. Oh my God. That's, That's amazing. an amazing yeah, that story. Wow. I don't think any of us can top that. No. <laughs> please, no. please tell me there's like a Getty images of that somewhere. <laughs> I wish. I wish. Good question. Yeah, I think my, my most was I knocked over an inkwell during a production of the Crucible. Fun. I was Reverend Hale. I was like slammed the table during the trial for this, you know, the latter half of the play. And whoever was, was being the clerk of the court had filled the inkwell with ink, which he wasn't supposed to do, but he wanted to, you know, write legitimately. I slammed the table and it just goes <laughs> and spills out all over my hand. And I look down out of the corner of my eye, and it's just like blue ink across my hand. And I'm trying to hide it. <laughs> and someone starts talking, and uh, uh, Danforth, who's like the, you know, the guy who's like running the whole trial, starts getting really angry. And I raise my finger to point it, like, and just <laughs> run ink all up his like white shirt across his face. That's pretty good. That's great. And he, go, and he's, he feels good. it, and just he doesn't know what it is. He just doesn't get his face, so he goes and tries to rub off the spittle and just this giant ink smear across oh, yeah. his face. And none of us could tell him, so he did most of the second half of the play just with giant ink smears on his face. Just go with it. And, uh, yeah. That's, that's pretty good. good. That's pretty good. Theater. I, uh, I, oh, man. In high school, I was doing this play, and this guy that I had, like, the biggest crush on ever was sitting in the front row, and I had one of those hoop skirts on. And I sat down on the couch, and I wasn't used to them, and the hoop went whoop, <laughs> up yeah. over my head, and I didn't have, it was like a dress rehearsal, so I didn't have the full costume on. So it was just like underwear, so it was just like <laughs> hoop and like panties. And I was yes. mortified. <laughs> I was mortified. Oh, no, it's like a he skin. was never my boyfriend. Are you oh, sure? I am sure. It's like and a then, skin you can download in Portal. And then I it's also great. did a, a production of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, and I was playing the narrator, and I was running out on stage. And you ate to, shit. Like, I did. I ate shit. Uh, as I was running out, leading the entire chorus out to like do this big dance number for Go 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 Joseph, and my foot caught in my skirt, and I just planted oh. it on the stage and slid. Yeah. <laughs> and then had to get up and finish the dance out. I got, I got beat up and, by a goat on camera once. Oh. That was my... <laughs> I was, I was, it was some show called Helltown, it only went like 12 episodes, and I was like some autistic kid who befriends a goat. That goat was not friendly. That goat, <laughs> that goat just like jumped me and nailed me in the face. I was cut out, like it was just bad. And like, oh, no. it was what? a little goat, but I was a little kid, and it just, <laughs> it was like finally a human I can beat the f out of. <laughs> Why have we not like killed a goat in the game as vengeance for your real I've life? I've already taken care of that. Okay. Yeah. That goat's. <laughs> I, I, I guess the best one that I have, it's kind of hard to talk, Gavrash. Um, I was in a production of The Nutcracker, and I was a soldier. And there was, um, we had to come through like the flat on the stage. And we had these like cats that came down, you know, and we, we were soldiers. And I missed the entrance and slammed into the flat. And anyone who does theater, you know that these flats are made out of like cardboard. So the whole thing went whoa, 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 whoa. And it almost fell over. But oh, but it did. It didn't yeah. fall over, it didn't fall over, but. Could have been worse. It was very obvious that I smacked into a flat. <laughs> I the burned down a theater section. and killed everybody inside. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. But nobody knows about that, so. We should go now. No. We sh you Can I finish should the Okay, next question. Yeah, I know. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite show on the Citadel. Nice. <laughs> no, a uh, serious DM question here. So, as a DM who has a party of some odd races... You can a, say that. A mouse, a fire genasi, and soon to be a tiefling. Oh. All right. Your game has a Goliath, and this... Tra Travis, you can help me with this one as well. Your game has a Goliath who seems to have a history as a marauder, to put it nicely. A what? A marauder. A marauder? That's a big word. So, <laughs> did that ever have any, like, roleplay issues early on? You have this big Goliath walking around town that used to be wandering around in the fields, robbing people, beating people up, stuff like that? It was, it, it was interesting, because his, his father had actually left his tribe, his band. Now, they're basically just, like, you know, wild living savage bandits that just destroyed and pillaged whatever came in their, their territory. Um, his father had separated from them after his early trials and made a name of himself in the city of Westron 
as like a respectable individual, and that's how you know uh, when he went and met Pike, there there wasn't a there's still people were not comfortable with him in the city, you know, and stayed away from him. But there was no all of a sudden immediate force of the, you know, the local guard going like, uh, you I don't trust you. We're gonna lock you up or cut your face. Um, so that wasn't a huge issue, but the band is still out there. We, we ran into... Uh, you did run into it once. We and ran it was, into them once. You ran into them once. It was a large-scale battle with all these Goliaths jumping out, and the party was like, we are so ruined, and the fight was about to go, and I think it was the first time that I've ever had Grog stop fighting and socially talk the party out of battle. Grog. <laughs> It was amazing. Yeah, it's so it turned out to be one of my one of my cousins, which goes into a backstory thing that will probably come up at some point. But I didn't want to fight my family because we would have probably all died. It was like seven Goliaths, and we probably yeah. It was bad. It would have been bad. It was a while ago. But he gets one pass, and then he's dead. <laughs> As it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. You sir. So, first things first, uh, Scanlan, as a bard, you are a huge hero and inspiration to myself. Yeah! I know. Don't tell her that. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah, can, um, we get a big, can we get a big piece of it? It's not even a bard spell! I know. <laughs> um, as characters, uh, yes. Vox Machina, do you consider yourselves to be heroes? Do you actively try to be heroes? Uh, You're asking us Vox Machina? I mean... You've done some pretty horrible things. We have done some pretty terrible things. Collectively, yeah. collectively we are, we're heroic. Yes, collectively. Uh, collectively. Individually, I mean, I don't think Scanlan... Scanlan thinks of himself as a god. Uh, uh, that doesn't really need to prove anything. He's just in it for the for the for the lols, um, for the most part. But I think collectively we've done some good things. We've, we've saved civilizations, and yeah. we've we've rescued people, and we've killed old people, which is always a good thing for society. <laughs> uh, per Percy, Percy's kind of starting to figure out that he's not that great a person, but but. <laughs> I knew, but like per Percy didn't know. And, but but at the same time, I, I, he, it's mostly because he's acknowledging that we're all kind of awful people. But together, except for except for Pike, Pike's great. Pike's, uh, great. Pike's, Pike's fine. But like together, we're actually like a, 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 a powerful force for good. Individually, not so much. Yeah. Grog lives moment to moment. I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> I think. I mean, I feel like Vax is a really good person. Vax is probably the, outside of Pike. Vax is probably the best person. The best person. Yeah, Vax is probably actually the most selfless. Yeah, because he, he really is in it to, to just... Per, per, Percy would have words about that, so... Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Percy, Percy done has... some shit? I feel like I'm, I'm speaking for Liam. Yeah, you Liam. can't run I can't Vax. speak for Liam, but I mean, based on conversations that we've had... Why don't you speak for yourself? Yeah, we don't really have these conversations. We try and keep yeah. it for the game. Um, uh, and it, like you said, is this, it's... Is this meta right now? This is this meta. Is this meta? meta? Roll initiative. This is meta. Are we gonna get... Are we gonna get shat on for metagaming? Ah! I don't know. We're all gonna die! You killed us! We're all gonna die! Way to go. Way to go. Thank you. I will, yeah. I will tell you this, though. Uh, Scanlan is a bit of an existent, uh, existentialist. And for a specific reason kind of thinks or has thought up to now that life is sort of pointless. So I'll, I'll tell you that. What? <laughs> I see that. Look yeah. at this yeah, guy. It's kind of interesting, actually, the, all the different <laughs> ideals so yeah, characters have evolved. Yeah. Yeah, yeah ideals. Some, some are... <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I get sometimes people online saying that I've done something that's really terrible, but for Vex, They're like, right. the motivation makes sense. It makes sense the reason that she would do certain oh, sure. things. And it's not bad in her eyes. It's not... Everyone loves to comment on if Keyleth did something right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone seems to have an opinion. And once again, it's... Yeah, people are need to understand where Keyleth is coming from. Keyleth is the worst of all of us. Oh yeah, okay. by far. I'm she killed a kid. evil bastard. A heart of ice. But honestly, like legitimately, Keyleth has probably done some of the worst stuff that's also trying the hardest. 
so it just really messes with our psyche. Yeah. It's Who's true. I'm part? the worst that I, I try so hard. It's, it's, it's not that we're not heroes, it's that we're flawed. We're flawed we're people. We're extremely yeah. flawed. We're flawed. Everyone's broken. Like we we're a bunch of idiots. Come on. We have no fucking clue what we're doing. All right, we've got Ever. about five minutes left. Oh, yeah, no, we got so a great shot. We're trying to get through two more take, questions, maybe? There are two or three we can do quickly. Lord oh, bless you. Oh can we God. name an NPC after him or something? What's your, what's your name? What's your He's name? just going to get killed in five minutes. What's your name? Just make him like the beer delivery Dean? guy. Dean? Dean is your next NPC. <laughs> we got to build him a room. Irish like beer wench. So, like, this is gonna slow down the autograph line so much. <laughs> There's gonna be so many misspellings and typos. We're gonna sign we'll one letter at a time. Marsha will give you Yes, Marsha. Go for it. We got five minutes. Okay, okay five minutes. Uh, you want my go. leftover one? You she can gives have the me the half drinking one. First, I want to thank y'all. Y'all are the reason my wife and I play D&D together now. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, Secondly, as a DM of seven players, um, so I kind of feel that pain a little bit. As players, is there anything y'all have ever wanted to do in game but have thought, no, that would just eat up too much time, there's eight of us, uh, we need to get the story moving along, or do y'all just, nope, everyone can wait and I'm going to have I, my two-hour moment. I, I try and I have, I try and have my attack plan ready for when it's my yeah. turn to fight. Like, yeah, you try and have your, yeah. I don't start looking at the board when it's like, all right, you're up. Yeah, no, it's... Mm, okay, I'm good. I feel like Matt does a pretty good job too of like being clairvoyant and sensing that like if we start to do something that's gonna go way off on a tangent and take up too much time, he'll like cut it off like the second we start to start and he'll he'll bring something up that puts us back on like a more cohesive track. But, but he also okay. allows us to go on our little individual yeah, journeys crazy. when we need yeah. to. Yeah, scamper. Which is weird. It's, it's, fun. Yeah. it's, it's, it's fun. It's little exploration line. elements. That's where the black powder guy came from. It's yeah. just some random <laughs> tangent, like, yeah. well, I mean, I, I most feel amazing like, NPC ever. Well, he put the fear into me, because he said I was going to run out of bullets and powder soon. I was like, oh, god, you're right. And I didn't yeah. really know what to do about that. And then you cast friends on me, you dick. I yeah. always feel <laughs> slightly guilty anytime we have, like, a shopping Sort of right, because that can eat up time with with yeah, even four players, exactly. let alone seven or eight. Exactly, yeah. and not it's, only just because like it's probably boring for the other players, but I feel like it's probably really boring for you guys yeah. to watch us like go by. But potion. we need mirrors. So shopping's so awesome. I mean, I love going shopping oh, with other people. Travis. <laughs> <laughs> it can it can be fun. It's it's about knowing as a GM when to edit a scene. Yeah. You know, you won't, when you can let things happen, let it be fun, let interactions occur, and then once you feel like the goal of that scene has been completed or is close to resolution, you can just nudge the party and be like, all right, so from this point, time. where do you want to go from here? Yeah. Or as time passes, you continue the transaction, you come to, you know, you, you can find a point where the fun has been had, the major arc of that moment is hit, and you can help kind of hurry uh, the bookend Play hit, and then continue to the next moment. So. But that's the, that's the hardest thing to do in improv is to both be in the scene and know when the scene is over. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. super hard. That's what so. I'm there and for. And we're also we're <laughs> yeah. like a bunch of A personalities. So sometimes you do have to like, you have to fight if you want to have a moment, if you want to have something, you have to not be afraid to jump in. And then, I mean, you, you've probably seen a hundred times where some of us have like started to do something and then it might have gotten cut off and then you just kind of have to let it go. You just yeah. move on. You just move on. You'll have another some, moment. Uh, just, yeah. like, cool. just like in life, sometimes, is not the right time or the right place. And you yeah. have to know what we're saying is you should sit down now. That's, that's more deep than what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got time for probably one or two more fast questions. If you don't get into your questions here, you're welcome to come and ask us at our signing well, later. Yeah. We also have uh, we a also panel have, tomorrow. We also have and a panel have tomorrow and tomorrow. tomorrow. So, yeah. Not you here, sir. In, in room C123. Room C123 for C1, two, three our panel tomorrow. 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 And yes. we're in our tables when we're not here or over there. We'll we're at our that. tables all the time. All right, so, um, how hard was it to, to transition the Gunslinger from Pathfinder over to what you guys do? Because for one of the games I'm a part of, my girlfriend wants to be a Dracomancer, and I didn't realize that was in 4th E, so I'm kind of having some trouble helping her get it up to this one. That's a tough one, because for, yeah. for me, was, the archetype, especially for fighter and combat-based archetypes, so I'll keep this fast, um, it's, it's much more cut and dry as far as the transition for natural physics. You know, a Gunslinger, we know how for the most part uh, ballistics work and some of the possible tropes for gunslingers in mo modern media. So that was an easy inspiration to transition and change some of the things and still make it interesting. When you get into stuff like that where you're dealing with you know more obtuse magics and other creatures that are mythological, 
Um, if you're having a hard time, once again, reach out to a community of home brewers like the Unearthed Arcana guys and, and ask for suggestions there. There may be things that are already existing that are a good route or basis that you could then tweak more into what you want your final homebrew to be. And now there's the DMs Guild, which allows yeah. everyone to put up their own homebrew stuff online. Um, and there's a lot of great content there that you can find people with. And if you like it, you can toss them a couple bucks and show how much you appreciate it. I think it's really cool that they've opened up the community to, to create their own homebrew content for, and provide it like that. For, for safety, how many revisions have you given me of, of the Gunslinger? The Gunslinger, like, probably close to eight at this point. About eight. About eight. <laughs> One more, one more, one question. more question. One more. Thank you very much. That's Ship it. I hope it's a good one. Ship it. And, and come, come, come by later on. We'll get to your guys' questions later on. Because everybody from here over oh, has to pee oh, so we, bad. So oh, bad. bad. <laughs> We've drank like three like we beers had a whole in an hour. Ale from we, we here over. Uh, my question is just. Uh, it's a personal question for Matt, so I'm sorry it's not like a, a whole over group a question. But question. I'm just I'm just so curious. Um, you've inspired me to start writing again and, and, yes. and to start playing in it. I'm really nervous. Um, and so as like in like to remember to myself to, to be who I want to be and to start writing again, I, I bought my wristband because I know I watch I see you you wear yours constantly. Mine I got a uh, nautical theme since my husband's in the Navy. It's got a ship wheel and a kraken. I just wondered, do yours have any significance? Like you wear them constantly or do that's they a, mean anything? That's a very interesting question. They do actually. Um, each wristband I keep on me not just from a you know a visual standpoint, but each has a, has a very specific yeah, meaning. Uh, this first wristband here was actually gifted to me by somebody in the middle of the desert of my first Burning Man. And it's a representation of personal responsibility and understanding where I came from and where I want to go and make sure that I don't stray from that path and kind of be true to myself. And it's a long story as to where that got its meaning, yeah. but that's essentially what it means. Uh, this one here was actually granted to me by, by uh, my best friend, Brittany Wallach, uh, at her birthday many years ago. And this one represents friendship. That's her right there. Brus, brus, brus. That's friend. Um, she, uh, so that this, this represents friendship and the people that have kind of held me in my dark times and got me to where I am today because honestly, no individual gets there. It's a bunch of people that bring you to your final, you know, faded future. So uh, thank you, Brittany. And Yay. this band here actually, which if you get a chance to look at it, has a bunch of numbers printed into it. This was made by Marisha for our anniversary a few years ago. Um, she, she took the leather, she, she dyed the leather, she printed it in the numbers and these numbers represent the actual uh, coordinates in the beach where we had our first kiss. So. Gross. I know, right? So yeah, each of these have a very special significance to me and are constant Thank reminders you. of good moments and people in my life. Thank you so much. Thank you, it was a good question. Great question. <laughs> this was a fun panel, Matt. Yes. You did great moderating. You've been awesome. I tried. I'm You're drunk. So good. good. <laughs> and you guys did a great job making that happen. Yes, <laughs> yes. We love that you guys are here. Portland. So we have a, uh, so we will be at the group uh, signing table over at four o'clock. From four to five, we'll be there. It's a short run, so if we don't get to everybody, that's okay. We'll be over at the, our tables until the close of the day, and then we'll be back here when the hall opens tomorrow yeah. as well. Yes, we will. We have another panel and a group signing tomorrow as well. Thank you so much for coming out. Yes, guys. Thank you so Thank much. You guys. We have to pee because you've given us so many beers. Yeah. All right, guys, so 4 o'clock group signing. We'll be at our tables after that, and then we'll be there tomorrow. Thank you all so much. Is it Thursday yet? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs>